Hey, this is Taylor with Major Outdoors and I'm just doing a tips and tricks on what I use when I go drop shotting. Um, I actually have drop shot for a while and I think I'm getting very good at it and it's kind of what I do. So it's something I have a lot of confidence in and everyone needs that confidence bait during tournaments. So that being said, we're gonna go over my setup. This is a G Loomis GLX mag light drop shot rod. It is an extra fast tip with, and it is six foot 10 and it's a mag light. It has a very sensitive tip and then it's kind of got a parabolic bend for it. So that's used for when you're fighting the fish once you hook up. The thing I really like about it is it's a nice size and it works really, really well and it's made for drop shotting. So with that being said, we'll talk about my line. This is a 3000 series Presidente reel. You just need a reel with decent drag. I like to use braid to a floral carbon leader. The braid is normally about 10 pounds and then my floral carbon is gonna be eight pounds. And with this setup, it's early spring. I like to actually throw little swim baits on it. And all I, um, with that being said, this is a threaded VMC Nico hook. There's two no hooks I use. Here it is also. This is what it looks like. It is a VMC Nico hook. It has really good penetration. It's a little bit straighter shank than most drop shot hooks. So when you hook set, you always get it in the top of the mouth and it works really well. The other one I use is in regular offset hook. This is a drop shot hook that I use to uh, fish when I'm in a lot of weeds. So the first method, oh, and then after hooks, we're gonna talk about weights. This is actually a lead cylinder weight. Um, I normally use tungsten, especially when I'm at tournaments. Uh, there's two types of weights really. There's um, cylinder and then there is a teardrop. Not as big of a fan as a teardrop. Um, I think they get stuck more and I like the feel of the cylinder. I think it works better, but try it out. You know, it's preference. So make sure you just pick the one you want. The three, uh, and then we're gonna talk about three ways to rig them. You can rig them one, like a swim bait. I really like this, especially in early spring when bass are feeding, actively feeding for spawn. You can catch a lot of numbers with this and it's a really quick way. And it's not like normal drop shot. You know, you're not just sitting there fishing over one boulder or one stump or whatever you are fishing. You can run this thing, you can burn it like anything else, like a normal swim bait. Next thing is, here I have a robo worm. The other way I thread it is you just do a nose hook. So you take that, nose hook it, sit it right about there. And then all you do is you just twitch the crap out of it and then this little tail just flies everywhere in the front of their faces. The other one I use, this is a KVD Dream Shot with the offset hook. All you're gonna do is Texas rig your drop shot bait. So you're just gonna go boop, pull it out, swing it around town, and I like to tech expose it. So get where you're supposed to go. See that? Go through the bottom, poke it through. And then what I do is I grab the plastic, pull up, and then insert the hook right there. So it's called tech exposing it. So it's fully weedless, but when the fish pushes down on it, then you get them. The other way, like I rig, rig the swim bait, is I will actually rig your normal dream shots, robo worms, anything, and I will rig them like I did the swim bait. So the reason I like doing this is because I actually feel like the hookup ratio is better. Um, the movement isn't as wild per se, but with that being said, this body stays very central. And then when they do eat it, you have a higher percentage because you're taking up more of the worm. Um, this works, I think, a lot better when it's really, really cold out or really, really hot out when those fish aren't actively moving a lot because then it gives the bait a little less action instead of nose hooking it. 
Um, the other thing I want to go over is baits. So obviously I showed you um, a small rage swimmer. This is a 3.25. Um, the other size I will throw is the 275. And this is all relative. If you have, you know, three and a quarter, or, you know, anything close to that size, I just don't really like going past three and a half. I think three and a half is kind of the cutting edge piece where I don't go much past it. And then we talked about the Robo Worm. This is probably a fan favorite for most people. I know a lot of people really live or die by these things. They're great. They work. And the third one we already talked about is the Dream Shot, KVD Dream Shot. Dream Shot has a lot of colors. It's got good action. It's not too big of a profile. It's got the flat bottom, which I like on the drop shots. Um, and what I mean is flat bottom. The same thing on the Robo Worm. Both of them have a actual flat bottom and it just helps them stay straight in the water column and then this is the z-man trick shot i like them when we're up north because they hold up a little bit better against some of the you know toothy critters uh these also float super good choice um shimmer shad four inch this is kind of like the biggest bait i'll throw i'll nose hook this one most of the time small skinny tail I really like to drop shot these because they they look very lifelike. A lot of people throw this. I'm not a huge fan of it, but I know a lot of people who do. Um, is just throwing a good old fashioned fluke. Yum makes flukes. Zoom makes flukes. They float normally pretty well. And then these work really good in weeds and stuff because they do have the cut bellies, so you can get them nice and weedless. And then the last one that I'll use is when I'm drop shotting on docks. I will actually wacky rig a. Uh, a dinger, a Sanko, you know, whatever it has to be. But wacky rigging is actually an option on drop shot. The last thing I want to say is when I'm fishing drop shots, it doesn't have to be very one dimensional. A lot of people think drop shot, oh, it's slow. It's, you know, it's, a, it, it's only meant for one thing. And I, I want to tell you it's not. You can drop shot docks, which I know is kind of out here. Throw small swim baits like it's a, you know, throw out and retrieve like it's a spinnerbait or a small swim jig or a small um, swim bait. You can do any of that. And they are right. I like, you know, when I am doing this method per se, the swim bait method, I like to go with a little bit longer um, leader to the weight. And the leader to the weight is what you're fishing. So if you're fishing, you know, you know your fish are mostly suspended about a foot. There's a little bit more than a foot but this thing's gonna drag behind it. So it's gonna be at a pendulum sink. So this thing is gonna actually, this bait is gonna sit lower in the water column than straight up, right? So when you're pulling it, it's, remember when you're pulling these baits, they're gonna get deeper. I like to fish these on rock pebble beds when it goes from you know shallow to deep going in. And then the other option is, you know, when you're fishing it weedless and nose hooked. Nose hooked is normally when you are fishing it on structure. So you know there's a rock pile. You know it sits up, per se, the rocks are about a foot big, per se. And you want these things just above a foot. Then you're gonna put this thing, the leader line at you know, 14, 16 inches. So it just sits right above the rock. So you, when those bass are cruising around the rocks or they're in the rocks, they can look up and see it and it's more wide range. Same thing with weeds. And this is one thing on Tonka or Minnetonka that a lot of people forget about is the weeds only grow so high. So if your weeds are three feet up, your leader should be right above it unless you want to be in the weeds. That's different. But if you want to be able to be look the bass looking up as an ambush point, then you're going to put that leader line where it needs to sit at that three foot mark or whatever your mark is that you're fishing. Um, final closing tips. I think drop shotting is probably the most versatile thing to do during tournaments. When you have these bigger tournaments past, you know, 25, 50 boats, the fish have gone through pre-fishing and I fish college, right? So college, we have the semi-pros go the week before us, then it's us, and then it's the high school for FLW at least, let's say. And the pros have already pounded the lake and we've been pre-fishing it. So we've pounded the lake and then the high schoolers are pre-fishing the lake. So the lake has been very pressured and this is a very non-pressure situation. So I think drop shotting is something everyone needs to learn if you're gonna be a tournament angler. 
And I think that giving it a shot, even if it is per se the swim bait version, this is still a fun way to catch them. You just sling it out as far as you can towards that structure point that's coming off and you run it. And when you hook set, it is not a jig hook set. You are not throwing a swim jig. You're not throwing a flipping jig. You are going from, you keep your rod tip barely up, about nine or 10 o'clock. And then when you get that hit, you're going to 12 o'clock and reeling as fast as possible. That hook will penetrate through and then your drag will let loot or make sure your drag is in tune because then your drag will start leaving line because then you're putting too much pressure on the fish and then you just fight the fish like normal. These are my closing thoughts on drop shotting. Give it a try this summer, learn something, teach someone how to do it. These are my tips for Major Outdoors.